Hello everyone, Mimikins here. Fatalis has been out for some time now but I still frequently get comments asking how to tackle him. So I thought I'd put together a video showcasing builds that are designed to make the fight a bit easier and allow you to recover if you make a mistake. These can be modified to suit your weapon type or give you ideas to create your own build. I show battle tips, explain how the fight works and showcase some particularly nasty moves that catch many players off guard. For those of you who don't need this guide but are watching anyways, feel free to share additional tips I might have missed with your fellow hunters in the comments below. He can be currently found in two quests, the special assignment The Black Dragon and event quest Fade to Black. Both are listed as Master Rank 24 hunts, while this is a low requirement I do recommend that you have your armors fully upgraded and have farmed augments for your weapons in the Guiding Lands before attempting this mission. If you're completing this quest solo or duo, I recommend the Palico with Shield Spire level 15, which will give you more openings for attacking and take the heat off your hunter. Make sure you're fully stocked up on consumables, max potions, don't just bring two but the materials to craft it as well. The talus hits hard and you will want to heal up that health fast. Mega potions when you don't need such a big heal, buffing items, Immunizers for speeding up recovery of the red health. A Stera Jerky could be useful as well as it instantly heals up the red health. Power and armor charms and talons. Boost your defense and attack by just having them sit in your bag. These should be brought along to most fights. AoE healing items for your teammates such as life powder and life dust. These are fast to use and instantly heal. Smoke bombs can be used to make Fatalis lose track of your hunter, making it easier to hit him with ballista or cannons during the later phases. Farcaster, barrel bombs, wetfish skill pussies for melee players, amazing if you need to sharpen your weapon in an instant. As for weapons, Elatrian weapons are a good choice. Not only is Fatalis weak to dragon, but these weapons have a massive purple sharpness bar. They are incredibly flexible to build with as they don't require anything like handicraft or master's touch to be good. One thing I found really helpful to the fight was having two builds for the fight itself, one as an opener and the other for the main fight. The first one which I will call opener is a full DPS set with heavy artillery and the ghillie mantle. This deals a lot of damage and sometimes straight up even breaks parts. I used a heavy bowgun with wire and heart for this part, you can of course use other weapons as well, this is just what I used. Don't bother with agitator for this as it won't be active during this stage. Eating for Feline Bombardia will increase damage you deal from the cannons and ballista. Then I made a second set which was my main set. You'll want this to be a good balance of damage and survival skills. There are several skills that I found really helpful in builds. Fire resist plus 20 is helpful in negating fire blight and reducing some damage. If you're not using plus 20 then make sure you fight Fatalis near water and you can make use of the skill Coalescence. That way if you get fire blight you only need to roll once in the water to remove it. Health boost plus 3, unless you're wearing the full Fatala set you'll want as much health as possible. Divine Blessing 5 is serious damage mitigation and helps a lot on survival. Fortitude, a small investment in case things don't go to plan and you end up carting. This way you will come back stronger and more defensive than before. Heartbreaker, getting breaks on Fatalis is important. Not only is it going to make it easier to farm the materials for your items, evil eyes are needed for every weapon and breaking the head twice make sure you get one each time, but it's also crucial to break parts to significantly lower his power. Clutch Claw Boost. This skill allows light weapons to wound in one go and heavy weapons to drop slinger ammo. It's useful for light weapons since softening the head and chest area helps with breaking parts and dealing more damage. Slinger ammo is useful for heavy weapons as dragon pods can flinch Fatalis with just two slinger shots. This can help save teammates from carting or if you need to bring the monster down from the air. Pods can also help you escape if Fatalis pins you. If you don't have this jewel already, you can craft at the Elder Melder. There's also a charm you can craft at the Smithy. Heavy Artillery, this doubles the ballista and cannon damage and can be the difference between Fatalis toppling over or not. Flinch 3 is a nice quality of life skill for multiplayer. It prevents other players knocking your character back with their attacks which can not only affect your DPS but also your ability to take healing items. The Master Rank of Tarth gear is also a very good option. This is from the quest The Eternal Gold Rush. 
Not only is it naturally high in fire resist, but it has some nice set bonuses. Guts, which allows you to avoid fainting one time if your health is above a certain threshold. Free meal secret, which procs like crazy if you cap it out. Unfortunately, this means unless you're using a Kulftarth weapon or a Safi weapon augmented with a set bonus, you won't be able to get the Divine Blessing 5. I really recommend when you can, use the materials to craft the Fatalis armor as the sheer amount of defense, set bonus and extra slots help tremendously. I would probably craft this before the weapons because it adds to both your survivability and damage. Even if you only have the ability to craft two parts, it means you can have the two set bonus inheritance, allowing you to cap out both tool specialist and divine blessing. I also have a god mode recovery hunting horn. Make sure you use immunizers with this build for insane recovery. This was helpful in groups as long as people weren't wearing the Safi armors. But I felt like I needed to use wide range as randoms were not buffing with items like immunizers which stack with the recovery speed making it more potent. The advantage of this build means that you rarely need to take a potion. You can attack aggressively and even if you take damage the health quickly refills. Skills like peak performance actually feel very viable even for players who get hit. You want to start with your opener build with high DPS skills, heavy artillery and the ghillie mantle. This is more useful for solo or organized group play. If you have someone that goes in Leroy Jenkins style aggroing fatalis making you move around, it can make it hard to execute. Make sure you put the ghillie mantle on before you use the hitching post, this will make sure fatalis doesn't aggro you. If you put it on afterwards he can see you and will start attacking. You can take buffs before you fly down or even on the ground here. He will roar but not attack. You may as well pick up some slinger ammo on the ground so you can use the flint shot for extra damage. Place barrel bombs below this cannon. Now we want to load up both cannons with 5 balls. Sometimes the palico will help out, other times she seems to bug and keeps falling off the ledge. Rotate the cannon towards the placed barrel bombs and then load up the next one. Move this into position so it's going to hit Vitalis. Once you fire the cannon you will lose the effect of the ghillie mantle and Vitalis will charge towards you. Make sure he starts moving towards you first, if you move too soon he will charge towards the other cannon instead. This should allow you to get both cannons in to deal damage and then topple him over, allowing you to get many attacks into his head. Afterwards, you can flint shot him to deal extra damage. If you send him in the direction of the cannons, he does actually destroy the wooden structure, so you can't use them again. Use a far caster so you can change back to your main balance set. Keep the damage on Fatalis whenever possible, aim for the head and chest. Once he's lost 25% of his health, the commander will shout and Fatalis will fly into the air. Run as fast as you can to the northeast to find a shelter to take cover in. This will protect you from the massive fire breath attack. There is a blister ammo near the wall which you can grab while you are nearby if someone hasn't already. You can use a smoke bomb to make Fatalis lose target on you so you can safely use the roaming ballista unless someone else is already on it. Try to land all the hits on him and if you're using heavy artillery to in your build it usually topples him over again. Be ready to go full throttle DPS on the head. Try to wall slam him at any opportunity. Once he reaches 50% health he'll start charging another massive breath attack. This time you need to run north towards a gate and use the switch to close the door to protect you and your team. Make sure everyone is there or they might get locked out and faint. After this phase he gets harder. 
run to the west side of the arena to use the blister binder to make Fatalis land. Attack him. When he breaks free, run back to the blister and pick up the ammo near the wall and bind it again. After you deal enough damage, he'll fly up in the air and start charging a big fire breath attack. You need to run underneath the talus to avoid being one-shotted. Use this extra time to sharpen your weapons, eat consumables or buff your party with your fabulous horn. Keep attacking him until you get the message the Dragonator is ready. Once it's ready, try and hit him with both spikes. If you have the ability to sleep, do it here for increased damage. Jump down and attack him while he's fallen over, deal enough damage and he will fly up into the air again for his next big fire attack. Make sure you run underneath him again. By now the roaming ballista should be back or about to be back, so you can use it again. He should be dead very soon. Generally, attacks you want to watch out for during the course of the fight is his conal breath attack, which deals damage fast. You can hide behind the rocks in the arena to avoid the damage if you can't get to the edges in time. This attack also gives an excellent opportunity to attack the head. Another extremely dangerous move is when he's on two legs and lifts his wings up. He'll blast the ground causing massive damage, be quick to get out of the way. He has sweeping breath attacks and a 361, generally you are safest near his side. Don't be fooled into thinking the tail is safe, that tail swipe hitbox is massive. Good luck for the fight, do make sure you make use of the ballistas and cannons. My mistake on my first runs was not utilising them to their full advantage and as a result I timed out. They made the world a difference not just for the damage they deal, but the windows of opportunity they gave for attacks. Breaking his head is key to significantly reducing the damage of his breath attacks. I had a group which didn't manage to break his head and he went absolutely crazy one-shotting players by the third stage. It was difficult to get in close to attack and the binding ballista wasn't there. I guess someone took it but forgot to use it. I did enjoy the fight against Vitalis despite many of my SOS group fails. It will be something I won't forget. Thanks for watching, please support the channel by liking and subscribing and I'll see you next time.